from Wall Street to Main Street to help small business owners have the same capital as corporate America and give them the same resources as a larger company. We cover business funding, business credit, scaling, business consulting, and much more. Check out the website at shieldadvisorygroup.com. Welcome to the show, The Liquid Lunch Project. Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're wrapping out today with Dapper Dan Hafner, the mobile app king. What's going on, Dan? Oh, not too much, you guys. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. I'm excited to, to get into whatever we're going to talk about today. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So, so Dan, let me ask you this. Disclosure, for full disclosure, this is going to be like a liquid lunch panino. On one side is the left bread, which is Matt, who is fully integrated and very savvy with technology. And then me is the knuckle crashing on the sidewalk trying to figure out this whole new world okay and you're in between trying to kind of marry these two worlds so tell us your classic client how do you marry how do you integrate technology with their businesses hey dan just keep in mind that luigi still puts www in front of everything ah okay gotcha gotcha Why, that's not, good to you're know not you're not supposed to be <laughs> you don't have to um <laughs> You don't have, you can, there's nobody, I mean, nobody's going to make you do anything otherwise, but that's a good question. Um, you know, I think, I think you got to think about business use case. You know what I mean? Like that's really what, what a lot of it comes down to, right? So there's actually one step inside of the, the process I usually take people through is like, okay, so what are you actually trying to accomplish? Like inside of a business role, right? Are you trying to uh, streamline your appointment setting process? Are you trying to streamline your fulfillment process? Um, are you trying to get more leads and more sales calls booked? Or like, wh what what is the ultimate goal, right? Because if you if you don't have a, a business process or a use case that you're trying to solve, um, you're kind of just shooting in the dark. You're shooting yourself in the foot before you even get started, you know? So a lot of people that um, that I've worked with or come to me, they, they, they're a little bit like you, Luigi, where they, they might be not, you know, they can't code and, and, and build any kind of thing off, off their, you know, um, for whatever reason they, they need to. Um, but they're also, you know, they can hold their own. They can do their own thing. Um, I, and, you know, as I, I don't know how to code still. To this day, I literally build mobile apps and, and web apps and I don't know how to code. I never learned it, right? So it's possible. Like I, I literally taught myself how to do this and there's solutions out there, but you have to think through the business goal that you're trying to achieve before you do that. So before even, you know, before we even get into that conversation with people, I'm like, all right, like, let's, let's see if this actually makes sense for you. If, if this is something that we need to actually go down the route, because a lot of times there's, there really are better solutions than going with an app. There are business websites. There are other platforms out there that you can use. I actually turn a lot of people away because they're not ready for it yet. Because like you said earlier, before we started recording, you can add fuel to the fire very, very, very quickly. If you set things up right. Um, but you got to figure out what you want to do. You know what I think, Dan, though? When most people start out, they go out and they get service A, service B, service C, right? So what we're actually doing with our company right now is a little bit different. We have we have the Kajabis of the world. We have the notions. We have the social media channels. We're doing the email marketing. But next thing you know, we have, instead of 10, we have 20 different applications that we're using all over the web. And now we're at the point where this is too much, right? We're paying way too much in fees. Number one. Number two is I don't want to have to go onto another platform just to get the same information I'm grabbing from one platform only because one does it better than the other. So we're actually working with somebody right now to help us build out and streamline our process. Is that really what you guys do over at Dapper Mobile? Yeah, no, that's not, I commend you for that. That's awesome. I, I've been there, right? Like, like you said, you start out with this $27 subscription and then this $97 subscription and this thing. And then, th and then, and then you got to figure out okay, now I have all this stuff. How does it talk to each other? Like, how, how do I make it all, you know, and there's a cool thing out there called Zapier that like kind of allows a lot of that to work or, or similar services. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what, um, I won't say we do that with everyone because everyone comes to us for different reasons, but a lot of people, we have done that, right? Like thinking through, okay, you got, you got this Kajabi and you got this social media poster and you got this other software and, and down the laundry list we go. And we say, okay, you're paying, you know, five hundred dollars a month for all this, just to throw a number out there. Okay, well, what if we could cut that, you know, maybe in half or at least two thirds of it or three fifths of it or whatever, 
but still keep all that, right? It just makes business sense to be able to do that, right? Um, and again, like you said, you don't have to have, like for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very guilty of it as well. I got 900 tabs open and I got browser ADD and I'm like, oh my God, where do I go, right? But to be able to, to have it all managed in one place um, is is really crazy, especially when it comes to your your especially like your your courses, your memberships, your in your CRM. You know what I mean? To be able to have that all in one place, um, that's that's invaluable. It really is. Yeah, Luigi's been all over me to get on this project since the beginning of the year. We're finally working on it because he he has like twenty seven windows open at one touch. <laughs> Dad, can you give us a classic success story and whether you want to give us the client's name or not or but at least give us like an industry where you you've integrated all these systems and processes and give us an idea of what you started with and what the end product looked like so the one i always like to brag on um was my very first client actually uh, her name was jessica she has an app called feel for your life um she was a breast cancer survivor um crazy story you can you can google or you can look her up it's really really fascinating and what we were able to do with hers um was to really make in a, a resource and informational type of app for people right like that that's what she wanted to do was put out there she found her own lump through a self-exam right and uh what we were able to do for hers this is kind of more of the, the front end use case of, of leads and list building and that kind of stuff um, I mean, she went out there and she built her list from literally like zero people to like almost 5,000 in like three weeks, um, all organically, no paid, no, no, anything like that. Like it was, it was awesome. It was really, really cool to see. And it only keeps growing. Like it's, it, she knows what she's doing. Like she, I mean, I will say she did a lot of the marketing and things like that on her own. This was kind of before I got into that whole piece of the business. Um, but it was crazy. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, and then the other, the other use case, like you asked about Luigi is, um, we have this app called Small Biz Highlight, right? She does a online web show. She does almost like a, a podcast like this, but she does it as live interviews and they're repurposed as podcasts. And it's it's meant to to highlight small businesses, local businesses, right? And she had all this stuff, just like, you know, she had her social media stuff. She had her show. She has a web show on like Roku and stuff like that now. It was everywhere. It was just all over the place, right? So what we did was we put all of that into one place. So she got, she has her her show, her podcast. Her well, we built a private community for her. She does all her products and her swag. She does advertising in the app, so she can monetize that way with digital ad space inside of the phone. Um, and it put it all into one place. So now when she goes out, she's just like not saying like, "Hey, go look up this Facebook group," and like, "Hey, go to our website and go do this." She's like, "Download our app. Everything's there." See you later. You know what I mean? Like she just, she books her, her calls through there. Um, it's just all in one place for her. So she can just kind of just take that one thing and go with it. That's amazing too, because she's not held to the uh, social media tech gods, right? When they decide they want to change the algorithm and only show, you know, 10% of your group, your post for that day, you know, that, that actually is a workaround around the whole situation, right? So tell me how you came up with Dapper Mobile. How'd you birth this baby so to speak oh man yeah i mean so the i guess the name came from when i was in a sales job i was working in a sales job a few years ago and people the guys just call me dapper dan i don't know I mean, maybe i dressed well I, I don't know but th that's kind of where the name came from um but you know i was working um so my wife's in the medical field we've moved around quite a bit um we moved like every three years we went to med school and then her residency and then her fellowship and so we're moving all the time i feel like we're in the army sometimes we just move everywhere yeah. Um, so it got, it got pretty hard to hold down a job. You know what I mean? So eventually I was like, all right, I got to figure something out. And I always kind of had this entrepreneurial bug in me, you know, starting like my twenties, it was pretty late. Um, but I saw just kind of like Luigi, I had a hundred apps on my phone. I really liked using them. I just kind of saw that that was a thing. And then one day I just kind of had this idea of like a health and fitness app I wanted to build. Didn't have any money, didn't know how to code, like had no idea how to do it. Um, so then I finally, uh, literally went to, uh, Google and just found all these different no code or low code type of softwares, started playing around at them, figuring them out. Um, I was kind of, I, I had a little bit of a background in tech, so I knew kind of what I was doing and it started as a hobby. I just started building things and failing and trying to build my app and failing and building it and failing. 
And eventually I, I finally found the place where I built it, launched it, got it out there, started scaling it, started learning how to market it, and then turned around and I was interviewing people on my podcast. I started telling people about it and they're like, that's really cool, man. You built a really cool skill. Can you like do that for me? And um, next thing you know, I was I was getting paid for it. So that, that's kind of the just the organic uh, story of how it got into it. Like that's that's really how it happened. So. so is it your your platform and the software that you have, is it a done-for-you service or is it a do-it-yourself type of service? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> so I really tried like hell to make it a do-it-yourself uh, option. Okay. And it still, it still can be done. Um, the way I marketed it and the way that I pushed it out there, um, we had a very, very dismal response for people wanting to do it themselves. To be, to be straight up with you, I, I literally made it cheap. Um, it was extremely affordable. And I got very, very few people to take me up on that offer. Um, so I turned it into a done for you service, took the price way up and made sales like crazy. Um, so go figure that. I mean, figure that one out. You know, like that's that's kind of where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, yeah. listen I believe can't change human behavior. Exactly. Yeah. You know, listen, you don't want to put another job on a business owner's plate. It may look great with the bells and whistles. They may pay that low ticket fee to get in, but if they're not going to use it at the end of the day, your attrition rate's going to be huge. Yeah. And I mean, and that was that was the mindset shift I went through too was, um, you know, I, I, I went in and I, I used probably almost every software you can imagine. And so I literally taught myself this skill in this in this monetizable process. And then like I went to people and I said, hey, you can build this thing. Like, look what you can learn. But then I didn't realize that people wanted to shortcut that, right? They're they're willing to pay more for the shortcut that you can promise them through the skills and the services that you provide, right? And when that light bulb finally went off, like I said, I didn't have an entrepreneurial journey. My parents weren't you know, entrepreneurs, so I never really learned a lot about this. When that light bulb finally went off, I was like, huh, okay. So I know this and I can do this. Let's just slap a price tag on it and see what happens. And then holy crap there it was you know so that was that was kind of how i learned that <laughs> yeah you know listen years ago me and luigi had this conversation over and over constantly you know it used to be go out you market for some business on one platform before this whole digital media stuff blew up right one platform maybe send out some postcards do your local mailer and you have business coming in the door now you got to be omnipresent on every single platform and you're doing great, you're spending money on LinkedIn, you're spending money on Facebook, you're spending money on Google, right? And then all of a sudden you turn around, all that money's lost when they change the algorithm and you never brought your clients back into one space where you actually own them because at the end of the day, you're just renting them on these platforms. Yeah, Wouldn't you agree? 100%. Yeah, 100%. I actually had um, one, of, one of my clients, I, I'm surprised there's not more, he came to me uh, earlier this year and I was kind of interested because I had reached out to him before and he kind of blew me off and then finally reached back out to me and was interested in having me work with him. And when I finally kind of had the onboarding conversations and got to the bottom of why he was doing it, it was because he got he got uh, shut down on Facebook. He had built up an organic group on Facebook of like, it was four or 5,000 people, was, um, was killing it, was crushing it. And it literally got ripped away in like a day and he had to rebuild it up redo all that and in the midst of that he was like hey man can we build something you know so like can we can we can we make this to where i own it right that was his motivation and then just like you said like it doesn't happen to everybody but there's always that what if there's well, always like you know we we helped a company purchase a multi-million dollar lead generation company that all they did was seo on google and they were top, top, top every day. Three months after they purchased the company, Google changed the algorithm, right? That multi-million dollar company is now lost half its value until they can figure it out again. What they didn't do was put everybody into a community that they owned and controlled at the end of the day. And I think that's where your idea is brilliant, you know? It's it's taking the fish from the from the sea and putting them in their own pond, so to speak, right? And you're the one yeah. who actually wow keep feeding those fish inside that pond because they're yours at that point in time. Sorry to be an anchor on this conversation, but help me walk me through these options here. Is, is Dapper Dan Hafner's approach salient for all trades or is it really user-friendly for certain 
fields like as software as a service or um, white collar services, or can you create that Dapper app for basically any sort of business? You know, that's a good question. Um, in theory, it could be anyone. You know what I mean? Like you can, if you really want it, like you can, you can have it built. Um, but that being said, you know, there are, there are industries and verticals that work better, right? The people who are really in more of a relational type of business, like people who are doing any kind of content creation, the coaching, the Wait, group. Wait, shot. He said the word coach, Lou. We got to do a shot. Moment of silence. Oh. <laughs> Moment of silence. Dan, you didn't read the disclaimer. You can't use the C word. It's a curse on this podcast. <laughs> I I did it. I, I must have missed that memo. That's that's my bad. So every it's time someone it. mentions the word coach, we do a shot. So mm. there you go. All right, now I you got, can I got monster. I got monster. I don't have alcohol, but the, that must that might be more dangerous, pal. It probably is. It probably is. I don't drink them that often, but I was I was dragging today. <laughs> so more consulting coaching based shot um businesses uh look at me don't look at me that was me i did it trust me i didn't see you take a drink yet Touché. <laughs> but more where you got to get information in front of people and in their hands in a timely manner right i would think would be the best types of business it's suited for i don't know if it would be typically suited for your local hvac company right what industries do you actually serve like is it like I could see it very successful for accounting firms, consulting firms, even attorneys, right? Service-based businesses that need to provide information in a timely manner. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. So it's it's funny. I actually, when I first started out, um, we were living in West Virginia at the time, and I actually um, started with the the angle of local businesses, you know, of gyms, restaurants salons like i was it was really more for like a service-based local business um that was right before COVID hit and turned out that like that was that was that didn't work out that was just a vertical that i found i was like yeah it's really didn't didn't work right and that's why eventually when i started realizing that there were all these people online that had communities that were trying to build a presence and they they were the pe i didn't even try to go after like they were the people that literally through the the, the working of my podcast started asking me about that. So I started paying attention. I, I started, well, why are they asking me this? Right. It was because just like the things, like you said, they needed, they needed to get that information out there and they needed to do it without worrying about an algorithm without being like, you know what I mean? So you send a, you send a push notification out, you know, those little annoying notifications you get Luigi. Um, like you can make sure that just about everyone sees those. You can't control, you know, it's not like you get 100,000 people down on your app, 100,000 people are going to see that. You know, like there's there's privacy rules and things like that in place. But, you know, there are, there's a, a hundred million things you can do with those. Like there's literally limitless things. And that's one of the most powerful pieces. People often ask me like, well, I got a, I got a mobile website. Doesn't that count? And I'm like, well, kind of, but not really because... You know, a website's kind of passive. You know what I mean? A, a, a website you still have to drive people to. There's there's, there's kind of a, it, it's a receiving type of mechanism, right? People come in there, they opt in, they see your stuff, they do whatever. A website can't go out into the world and do anything, right? But right. the app, you get the ability to actually use it as a receiving method where people can download, they can sign up, then they can opt in. And you can, you can it's like an email, it's like text. It's like an outgoing marketing machine. Yeah, I think, I think with, Apple's latest update, right? All the pixel from Facebook is pretty much worthless these days, right? So you have to actually control and own your your audience at the end of the day, right? Um, I think uh, overall, we're in for a lot of changes in, with the web as we know it, especially with Web3 coming about, you know? Any insights onto Web3 and how you think that's going to change the marketing and small business space? Yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, I can't I can't intelligently say I'm 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 actually behind on on learning about all that to be to very be very honest with you guys. Um, you know, I've I'm really looking into more, you know, this this type of NFT um token based thing, you know, and then how how you monetize with that, how that applies to the industry of, 
information and education and that kind of stuff because it, it's fascinating. You know, like there's there's people who sell NFTs like and they they sell real estate through that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's like it's there's there's tons of really cool things that's probably to mention. I'm I'm very behind on to be honest, um, but I mean I really do see um, an eventual use case for that. Um, I, I really can't say what that use case will really be. Um, but I'm sure when somebody comes out with it, it's going to be crazy awesome. Like it, it's going to be really like, huh, I can't believe we never thought of that. Like that's really <laughs> genius. You know what I mean? So hope it's me. I don't, I don't know if it will be. <laughs> Dan, let me throw you a case study and you tell me the problem and the solution. Okay. My wife and I, we have Thai night once a month and we use seamless because well, it's seamless. It's frictionless. We literally press three buttons and we have the same order once a month. Now, the good thing is that restaurant gets a sale that it probably would not have normally had, but it's giving up 30% of its revenue to have that sale. And probably more dangerous to the restaurant, he doesn't own the data. So how could we possibly use Dapper Dan's app to solve that problem? Um, we could just build your own, you know, with where we don't take any commissions. We don't take the 30% at all. You pay a monthly fee. That's it. That's That's exactly what it is. We can do that. I don't do a lot of that. I don't really go out and, and advertise that um, just because I don't, I, I want to say this tactfully. Um, the restaurant business has a reputation. You know what I mean? Like the, the restaurant business can be a little bit different, right? I got to bring my partner up here. She always wants to sit on my lap. Um, but no, that, that, that is, that's a very, very good question. You know, there's actually a lady I was working with not long ago who wanted to kind of take this idea of, um, you know how there's all these like uh, in the summertime there's all these uh, produce stands around and things like that. Yeah, like the farmers markets. Farmers markets, yeah, something like that, right? To be able to provide people a platform to order from those, or you know, even have delivery from those and stuff like that, which is like a whole different idea. Um, but you know, I've I've done that with people before, where we're just like, hey, do you want your own, you know, online pickup or delivery app, um, or even you know, um, nationwide shipping? We can do. Um, for just a monthly fee instead of paying that 30, 15 to 30% per transaction, that's definitely something we can do for you. You know what it is though? Here's the issue with that. When you have these seamlesses and you have these gold bellies and you have the Ubers of the world, they're spending a ton of money in marketing, marketing, marketing. And maybe sometimes you don't know what you want to eat. So you have more options. The real key there would be how do we convert those people that order from Uber for that one-time fee? into ordering from your app the next time around. Because truth of the matter is 30% is a lot of money to give away, especially with restaurants when they're working on small margins. But at the end of the day, that 30% has to go into advertising their own app anyway, right? Because yeah, you yeah. have the solution, but if nobody knows you have that solution, it's not a good solution, right? So you have yeah. to be able to spend. And that's why these tech-backed VC applications, they spend and spend and spend and lose money and lose millions and millions and millions of dollars before they make money. And in order for them to make money, they have to spend or, or charge that 30% plus. Yeah. And another thing why, why I've never really got, you know, super into the, to the marketing and then selling of it to those particular verticals is, you know, we can set up your own app. We can do your, if like a brewery, you know, or something like that. Um, but then if you mark being able to deliver, you have to deliver. Like that's the nice thing about DoorDash, about Grubhub, Uber. You don't have to employ a, a driver. Like they just come and they get it. You pay that 30%. It's taken care of. Yeah, it's less money, but it's money you made that you wouldn't have otherwise made, right? Um, because then if if we give you your own thing, then you got to hire your own driver. You got to do that kind of stuff. And I never really wanted to get into the business of building another Grubhub or DoorDash or anything like that, you know? Well, uh, essentially, it's, it's, it's an organized logistics company at the end of the day. Tech-based yeah. tech -back organized logistics company, you know? Yeah. That's really a salt-of-the-earth type of company. It's just that they got their app in everybody ha everybody's hands, and that's that's the key to doing that. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's different little things you can do. You can always, um, you can put up those little QR codes, you know, those QR scanners to be like, hey, next time, order from our app and save 15% or whatever you do, you know? Like, there's... There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. There's always like those local community papers that you can advertise in and do things like that as well. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's a, tr it's a trade-off either way. That's why, like I said, it's not always the answer. 
to go and do your own thing because there are consequences and things to think about, just like you said, of, oh, well, wait, I didn't think about that, you know? So there's there's just different, that uh, goes back to your first question about to the use case of like, what are you trying to accomplish, you know? So when a client comes in and they hire you, what's your onboarding process look like? What are the first three questions you ask the client? Uh, first three questions, I don't have my, my document pulled up, but I mean, usually we just have an onboarding call. We, you know, we really find out like what kind of app are you actually trying to build is probably the first one, right? Like are you trying to build a restaurant app? Are you trying to build a coaching app? Uh, shot. I knew that was coming. Um, are you trying to build, you know, like one that's going to be just a, a client fulfillment app where you're not trying to sell people, but you, you're just trying, you have all these people you just want to put into here. Are you trying to build a community one? You know, what, what types of things do you want in it? Right. Like that's, those are really kind of the first couple things. And then where do you want to go with it? Like what, what business problem is this trying to solve? What does it look like ideally? Like, um, we just acquired like uh, another smaller app business recently and we brought in all their clients and we had onboarding calls with them. And a couple of them were like, you know, they're personal trainers. And she's like, man, I'd really like to just shut down my whole fitness studio and do coaching online through my app. Like that would be the ideal goal. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's a tangible goal. I don't know if we can do that, but we can, we can try to help you get there. Cause it's math. It's just math. Right. So, um, that's usually what we try to find out is like, what are you really trying to build? You know, what, what do you see it solving for your business? And then where do you ultimately want it to go? So what are the biggest challenges that you actually face inside your business on a daily basis? Um, like for my business or, or client businesses? Oh, your business, you personally, my, my business, my right? Business. We all have, we, we all have challenges. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if you were asking about, um, about the other ones. No. So for me, um, probably, I mean, probably time management and, and fulfillment, um, efficiency for me is really, I'm, I'm still kind of at the stage where I, I really, I really need to, to, to buckle down and, and get more help and hire more stuff, but I'm still kind of at that at that stage where I, I don't really want to let go and I kind of want to be able to do a lot of this stuff. Cause that's kind of how I built my thing was, is it was all a service through me and then processes through me and that kind of stuff. So I'm still kind of in that stage where I'm like, I'm letting more go and I'm learning to do it. Um, but then also being terrified to do that. Um, so that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I struggle with recently. I, I think a lot of business owners start out that way, right? Yeah. There's levels to this game, right? You have to, uh, have to know how to do it first of all then you got to have the the courage to let somebody else do it right and walk away so you can actually oversee the whole overall process you know when you're working with your clients is it only in your local area or are you national are you international uh international actually got a client in the uk um so but there are a lot of them there's uh one lady that's local to me it's like 30 minutes from me um and other than that it's pretty much nationwide is your team all based here in the U.S. or are they overseas? You got to us using some virtual assistants. Yeah, both uh, both uh, stateside and overseas for for online and virtual assistants and stuff. Yeah, very nice. So, where do you see your business going to in the next twelve to twenty four months? What's what's three look like for you? Yeah, yeah, I've thought about this a lot lately. Um, you know, ultimately, what I've been trying to to build is is really a very high level agency, a really one stop shop for things. And that's kind of one one place that I see this this was a decision I had to make a long time ago was when I first started, I was kind of just like a developer. I was just kind of like, I'll build you the thing and then you can just go do your thing. Right. You just go market it, go figure it out, go figure out what to do with it on your own. And I saw a lot of people not getting results. Right. So then I decided that I needed to be you know, I'll build you the thing and we can help you market the thing. We'll build you the app, we'll help you market it, we'll help you go that way, right? And um, ultimately, I kind of see Dapper Mobile Apps evolving into that one-stop shop of it's not only just a developer that you can hire on Upwork or Fiverr or something like that. It's 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 a really curated, hand-holding, um, individualized solution to get your product built, but then also help you nail the message of it and nail the marketing of it and actually- Matthew, can you a... say recurring revenue? <laughs> what? I didn't say recurring revenue, did I? <laughs> Holy recurring revenue, Batman. Is that another word that I got to take a shot for? I love I love where the 3.0 is going. That's uh, because okay. at, at the end of the day, the oh. 
entrepreneur does not want to be a jack of all trades. He wants to be, a, he wants to focus on his expertise. You know, the, the, the shoemaker wants to cobble. He wants to make shoes. He doesn't want to do paperwork. He doesn't want to market. He doesn't want to do P and L's. And if you can provide that sort of service and make that service continual, I think you've got a beautiful recurring revenue model. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was another word I, I wasn't allowed to say or what, when you started. I was... No, 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 no. Reoccurring revenue is a word that it's the holy grail to us. We love yeah. recurring revenue. A hundred percent. And then when you talk about the next 12 to 24 months, that's that's really where the goal is to, to take that, you know, MRR, if you will, um, to, to all new levels. Recurring revenue is like a George Michael commercial in the 80s. I mean, that's, you just wanted to see a George Michael music video. That's all you wanted, man. You're really showing your age there. Yeah, I was gonna say I was I wasn't around for those. Uh, I'm a '90s baby, but uh, I, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Listen, Dan, we really appreciate you being here with us. Why don't you tell the audience where they can actually go out and where they can find Dapper Mobile and all your apps and how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. So you can go to DapperMobileApps.com. That's a good place to go. Got a lot of resources there. I also like to on podcasts. I like to share uh, with everyone the actual app that we made um, that you can go in and check for um, an example and see different stuff. It's called Mobile Domination. Um, so you can download that on the App Store, Google Play. Um, there's also a web version for you, Luigi, if you don't want to download another app, so I can get you the link for that as well. Um, Does that come with like an Ikea how-to uh, sheet? <laughs> uh, not quite an Ikea how-to sheet, but you know some, some, def- some things like that for sure. <laughs> I'll get there, guys. I promise I'll get there. Dan, thanks so much for being here, man. I appreciate you. But before I let you run, describe yourself in one word. Obsessed. I love it. Obsessed. I love it. Guys, that's a wrap of another episode of the Liquid Lunch Project. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for listening to the show. And make sure you subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. We'll see you on the next episode of the Liquid Lunch Project.